let's start learning about genetic crosses. We're going to jump right in and assume you know the basic terms for genetics, or at least have watched the video about Mendel's laws. Today's video will look at monohybrid crosses. Monohybrid crosses are genetic crosses looking at only one trait, such as plant height, flower color, and so on. We use a Punnett square to help us determine possible genotypes and phenotypes of alleles. We'll use our tongue rolling example for our first monohybrid cross. We need to determine the frequencies of the F1 generation if two people that are heterozygous for tongue rolling have children. Being able to roll your tongue is dominant, so we represent it with a capital T not rolling with a lowercase t. Remember to use the same letter when talking about the same gene. As the parents are heterozygous, they both have the genotype capital T lowercase t, and both have the phenotype of being able to roll their tongue. So our parent generation would be written like this, and we're crossing them. To determine our F1, we'll use a Punnett square. One allele from the first parent goes above each box, and one allele from the second parent goes to the left of each box of the Punnett square. This represents the possible gametes formed from each parent. Inside the Punnett square, we combine the possible gametes to show what possible alleles their kids would get. So these combine for two capital T's. Here, a capital and lowercase, same thing in this box, and this last one would have two lowercase t's. Our possible genotypes are then these three options. Statistically, there is a 1 in 4, or 25% chance, of having a child with homozygous dominant alleles, 50% chance of heterozygous, and 25% chance of homozygous recessive. Now this is not saying that they have four kids with these genotypes. It is the possible genotypes their kids might have. If these two parents were to have lots of kids, we would see this pattern. Or we could also read this as the chances of what a child might be. Every time the wife is pregnant, there is a 50% chance that the baby will be heterozygous for rolling their tongue. Now for phenotypes. 3 out of 4, or 75%, will be able to roll their tongue because they have that dominant allele, while 25% will not be able to roll their tongue. Let's take a look at another example. A plant that is homozygous tall is crossed with a plant that is homozygous short. Determine genotypes and phenotypes for both F1 and F2 generations. So our parent genotypes are homozygous tall, two capital letters. I'm going to pick H for height. And homozygous short, two lowercase letters. Plug these into our Punnett square for our F1 generation and write each possible combination. Our genotype is 100% big H and little h, heterozygous, and our phenotype 100% will be tall. To determine our F2 generation, we take two of our F1s and cross them. So now we are crossing two heterozygous genotypes. We get 25% chance of homozygous dominant genotype, 50% for heterozygous, and 25% for homozygous recessive. Our phenotype for F2 is 75% tall and 25% short. We'll look at one last example. On a horse, short mane length is a dominant trait, where a long mane is recessive. Determine the genotype and phenotype of the offspring of a horse heterozygous for a short mane and a horse with a long mane. First, the genotypes of the parent horses would be capital M, 
lowercase m for heterozygous, and the long mane is recessive, so that horse would have two little m's for their genotype. Go through the Punnett square with them, and our F1 generation genotype would be 50% heterozygous and 50% homozygous recessive. The phenotypes would be 50% short and 50% long. Make sure you understand these examples of monohybrid crosses and how to do them. In our next genetic video, we'll start learning about other kinds of genetic crosses.